What's going on people, this is Jagos, and I wanted to go over the Retro Gamer Video Game Hardware Handbook. This one is a little old, and I actually had another uh, video about it, but this one is just basically going over all of the game machines that have been around. So if anybody wants to look at the history of video games, this is probably one of the greatest books to come out. Now, I've already looked at some of it, and... I still need to go through all of it, but I did another video and it didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to. So you can see that there are plenty of video games. This is an incredibly detailed book going from 1977 to modern history. So you can see it all yourself. Um, I would recommend looking for it, for it or if anybody wants to see parts of it. They are more than happy to sit here and let me know. Some of these I didn't even know about, such as the Fairchild. Um, they have a top five like Tic Tac Toe, Blackjack, Alien Invasion, Pac Man. And we're just gonna go through the book, point out everything, look through everything, and basically this is just gonna be my review of it. Or, you know, a visual review, trying to do it all in maybe 30 minutes. So that way you all can sit here and enjoy a brand new uh, video from me. So the Atari 2600, I mean some of the great games, Star Wars, Space Shuttle, Pitfall. Um, you had a lot of simple graphics and I believe if we look at what many retro gamers will look, look at, this is one of the first RPGs. It was on the Atari 2600. Now, I'm not going to go through everything, but see, Perfect 10 games, Atari 2600, Space Invaders, River Raid, Berserk, Adventure, Miss Pac-Man was one of the games that came out, but look at how it looks. Ugh. So, I just want to keep going. Defender. Man, some great games here. Hero. Never even heard about this game. And this one is Pitfall. I remember playing that. Even had the game. And number nine here is Ice Hockey. So you can see it's very, very basic. Now, the Intellivision. This is another one of those machines that I never ever really had. But you can see some of the commercials for it right here. As well as Astro Smash, Night Stalker, Sub Hunt, Buzz Bombers. I mean, I've heard of some of these games, but I never played them, so I have no no recollection of them. Donkey Kong looks pretty bad on here, and during the time, what was happening was that you'd see a lot of different clones on a lot of different consoles, very different from what you'd see nowadays. Now, the Game & Watch was its own system of Super Nintendo games, so you can look and see just all of the games that they had down there. Now I had a few of them myself, but I mean over the years I've gotten rid of them. And let's see. Donkey Kong is here. This is Mario's do, do, do what does that say? Mario something. I can't even make it out. I'm just gonna keep moving on. Popeye, Donkey Kong Jr. and Snoopy. I didn't even know Snoopy was a game. But we'll keep going. Balloon Fight, all of these different games that you can now play on GameWatch.com, Parachuter. If anybody asks, probably I'll put some of these communities up that are in the book so you can look into the different game systems just for your own sake. Because this is a great book, believe me. Now, Spitfall Sparky? Never heard of it. But that's how it looks. And you got Donkey Kong over here. Climber, Balloon Fight, Super Mario Brothers, on different ways to play it, so it's been all over the place. The Sinclair ZX81, I'm just going to kind of skip. It was a cassette tape player, but I never really played that, didn't hear, hear about it, and the games look like something you can get on your TI-86. I mean, I know the TI-86 is now a lot better, but, um, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. That just looks like TI-86 material nowadays. Yeah, but I guess some people bought it. BBC Micro, which was made by Steve Ferber. Okay, and here's the machine. What 
did this thing do? Speech, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but how it works. Um, micro exclusives. Strikers Run, Magic Mushrooms, Felix meets the evil bees. <laughs> Felix the cat, before he turned adult. Uh, Gala Force. Hmm, some of these games look pretty good. Pretty interesting for what they do nowadays. Now, the perfect 10 games, I'm looking at number 5 here. And number 5 is Mr. Double E, or Mr. Do. Now, this was a conversion from uh, Mr. Do, and that's basically what you see here. Um, other games, well, I don't see any that I'm going to really talk about. Exile, again, I didn't play the system, so I don't know much about it. There's another ZX Spectrum. Sinclair ZX Spectrum. And we'll go just quickly to the top 10. And mm, nothing I can really see. They use the isometric. Now, for me personally, I've played Marble Madness, and that's probably the only game that I see with this type of perspective. I never really played a lot of games in the old days that did that. So that's just me and my personal bias against it. Now, Dragon 32. Let's see what we got here. Games are looking a little bit better. Let's see what this is. Jet Set Willy, Chucky Egg. Man, we got some weird games around here. Laser Racer, Dragon's Bane, Moon Cresta. So, Perfect 10, what games did it have? Donkey King. That's what they had for Donkey Kong. Yeah. Right. Um, let's see, number two was Jet Set at Willy, which is their own exclusive. What you see here, and probably you don't get a lot of people talking about it, people would sit here and take a concept and then dilute it by putting it on um, their own version of, of it. And so when you go to other places, you'll see many of the different um, revisions of the game that ran on software just so they could say they have it. I guess nowadays with the copyright laws being as they are, it works out to some kind of benefit, but nowadays the public is the one that suffers, but that's another story for another time. Here's the Commodore 64. Wow, they gave you that full page. Now, the game started getting really homebrewed by James Monkman, but you can also get something that looks a lot like Kirby. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, Thalamus Classics, found it. Let's see, uh, Qdex, Quidix, Hunter's Moon, Creatures, Nobby the Aardvark. I don't actually remember Nobby the Aardvark. I think he was a cartoon character. I may be wrong, but I think he was a cartoon character. But anyway, keep it going. Soccer, Insects in Space, Whizball, and Parallax. Now, Whizball, I think I've heard of, but I didn't really play a lot. So, take that as you will. And, overall, the, it's a decent system, and it's got decent graphics. Now, this is one that I remember, uh, Way of the Exploding Fist. This meant to, and we created Karate Champ. So, that's the game that pretty much inspired that Commodore the C64. Let's see, Budget Classics, Kicks, Code Masters. Let's see. Nah, not really gonna talk about that. Again, I didn't play this system, so I don't know everything. But Rainbow Islands, you know, a lot more people know it as Bubble Bobble. They, I mean, that's where these big eyes come from. But Rainbow Islands is another. It's like. Um, Basically, it's in the same vein, but they turned the dragons into humans. And so, while that was going on in the arcade, they also made this version. Let me see what it says. And this follow-up, it was a follow-up to Bubble and Bob. Bubble and Bob used rainbows to kill enemies and climb above the rising water. Now, I've played that game, and I'm not a big fan of it myself, but I like the old original Bubble Bob which is right here. Bub and Bob got turned into demons and basically they go to rescue their girlfriends. Simple premise, the 
game was great, the puzzles were awesome, and it was a way basically to get couples into the theaters. Now, if you remember this game, this game was called IK Plus, which basically would turn into from Way of the Exploding Fist into Karate Champ and a few other games. Um, I'm not too familiar with this game specifically, but Karate Champ is kind of like the predecessor to most fighting games. So, uh, Wiz Ball, don't know much about it. Um, nine, Project Firestart, don't know much about it. Zack McCracken is very, very interesting. This is the start of adventure games. And with the start of adventure games, you'd have games like Maniac Mansion that came out later on. So it's something to keep in mind as we go through this. So here's the Vectrix. It was a TV and gaming system all in one. Uh, don't really play it, but um, I'm getting a full virtual Game Boy vibe. Wow, Vectrix. It was really Vector graphics. Kind of like the... Huh. So... Games, literally, they look like blank screens. You can barely see them. But what this is, is basically, they draw it online. They, they draw it on the screen, and that's how you play the games. It was really, really, really before it this time. And these pictures don't really do justice. I know it's a little bit blurry. Hopefully that you all can see it, but... I'm gonna move on. Now, this is the MSX. This, a lot of people should know these games. ER Kung Fu. Uh, I don't know what that is. Karaku, Karakuri. Let's see. Karakuri. Okay. Okay. Mist. Mr. Doe versus Unicorns. That's what this one is. Uh, we got a Penguin Adventure. Yeah, Mr. Doe versus Unicorns. That's what that means. Mr. Doe versus Unicorns right here. This one, I can't read the kanji. So, sorry about that, folks. And we're just going to keep moving. So, some of the games that you probably know of. Um, if you want to look into the community, I'll put the links in the the bar if I get a lot of requests for them but uh, I'll keep it I'll keep it mostly just moving for the time being uh, let's see time pilot time pilot I don't even know what that game was but Konami was converting a lot of their hit games let's see super manial I don't even know what this game is penguin adventures I don't yeah penguin adventures right there and a lot of home brewing was going on. With the home brew, you would have a lot more people that were starting to develop games. So you get the Metal Gear Solids. And you get, like, Sid Sna SD Snatcher, which also came from Hideo Kojima. And he's never really made a, another um, solution, another game to that. And you'd also get the Vampire Killers, which would go on to be Castlevania. And you had a lot of diversity in games. So it's always something to really look into. Just to look at what our past is. Family Computer or Family Com. Family Com, which would become the Nintendo Entertainment System in the United States. So you can just see how that basically trans uh, rest. I don't know what happened. But let's see, family computer. It's the family computer. This is the family computer. That's what it says. Um, that one. The Famicom had actually gone online. Hmm. But other things: Pocket Pleasure, Metroid. You had Super Mario Brothers, Zelda, Ghost 3, and plenty of other favorites that you can see here. Oh, um, there was a lot of diversity going on. So. One game that I do want to finish up, Mother. Uh, the Kunio Kun series is Neketsuka Ha Koha Kunio Kun, which is hot blooded Kunio Kun. And this has always been one of my favorite series. 
um, playing River City Ransom in the United States. That's always one of my favorite games that I love to play to this day. Um, the other ones I don't really know much about. I'd love to learn more about this Swan Lee because I've never heard of it before and it looks really, really interesting. But let's keep moving to the Amstrad CPC 464. Yeah. Uh, Bomb Jock. Let's see. Joe Blade. Don't really know these games, but just showing people a few of the games just in case they can have their own nostalgia moment. Spin Dizzy. Visitor. Fantasy World Dizzy. I've heard of Dizzy, but that changed. And Kit Dexter. Okay, what is this one? Um, don't know much about it. And let me change it around a little bit so that way you all see less shadow. Ugh. Okay. Oops, sorry, sorry. Sorry for anybody that saw the shaking, but let's keep this going. Let's see, Prince of Persia that came out right here. And for the most part, ugh. Sorry, sorry. Let's see. Perfect thing game. Let's see. Total Eclipse. I'm looking around. I don't really see much that really makes it stand out for me. Chase HQ I've heard of. I think that went on to the Nintendo, but I'm not too sure. The Amiga with floppy disks. Wow. Changed a lot nowadays, didn't it? Let's see, what is this? Defender of the Crown. Never heard of that game. But, just go going. Super Skid Marks. Now, this looks like RC Pro Am, but just not quite as small. Well, it's took from Super Off Road style and made it its own. That's what that one is. Guardian, which is a predecessor to Star Fox. Super Frog. Never heard of it. Um, arcade action. Alien Dree. Alien Dree Tower Assault. They also had Monkey Island, which was always a great game. Um, I've never heard of Liberation, but it seems to take from a certain dungeon crawling style that you don't quite see as much nowadays. And then there's Lemmings, which was always an awesome game. And Speedball 2, I've heard of. I've never played it. So. Let's keep that this train moving, so more people can see more. Some of the the teams out here. Let's see. We got Team 17 at the top. We've got the Bitmap Brothers. We've got Psychnosis, Cinemaware, uh, Lucasfilm, and Sensible. So you can see where they got their start. Now this is the Atari ST. Basically, that's when they started really, really pushing for home consoles. Uh, Atari would do a lot of things in the industry, particularly at this time. They were, you have Activision, if you've seen any of my other um, videos, you know that Activision began to do third-party software with the Atari, and they were one of the first third-party software companies, just to let you know. But they also went through different revisions with the Atari, and they had some pretty good games. So let's see what their top ones were. This one is OIDS, Lloyds, I don't know, Blasteroids, Zombies, whatever. I'm not gonna go through it. They had Xenon 2, Mega Blast. They had Midwinter, Time Bandit, which I don't really know much about. Um, no Second Prize, Lethal Access. Lethal Excess, I'm sorry. Captain Blood, Blood Money, which I've never, never, never heard of. And then this is Star Glider, and then Dungeon Master. Now, Dungeon Master, I think I've played something similar. You'll see this type of a game in others, like um, Boymon or Legend of the Mystical Ninja. They have those sections that are similar to it. So, you can see. Now, this is the big boy Nintendo Entertainment System. Donkey Kong. Big NES heroes, you got Link, Simon Belmont, Mega Man, Kirby, and Mario. All they have to do is change Kirby out for Samus, and you 
basically have Captain and the Game Master, this whole team right here. Okay, maybe not. Wait. So you switch Kirby out for Samus because she was in the comics, and here you switch it out for Kid Icarus. That would be the Captain and the Game Master and everything from the 80s. I don't really have to go over much of it. Um, this is David Darling. He created Cold Masters, which created Micro Machines. But some of the games, I mean, people already know these. Mega Man, Bionic Commando, DuckTales, Little Nemo was an awesome game. Uh, other games. Wizards and Warriors was a pretty good one. WWF WrestleMania, I didn't really play. I actually had M-U-S-C-L-E Muscle. That's, and that was just basically King Clown. Um, Snake Rattle and Roll was a great game. Battletoads, still haven't beat it to this day. Screw that game. Um, we had great other get great games like Hudson Soft. They had Bomberman, which would go on to be sold, I believe. Um, Melon Secret Castle, you don't see anymore. And Faxanadu was another Rescue the Princess type, but not a lot of people paid attention. And Princess Tomato and Sally Kingdom, I don't think anybody even remembers this game. And that's a great tragedy. Now, Konami Connection, Radius, great game, uh, Castlevania, good game, Metal Gear, Contra, those are all great games. Uh, Perfect 10 games. I don't know about duck hunting, but I mean, getting the light gun and having the little robot that got linked with it, that was pretty good. Um, Mario, as I said, River City Ransom, um, Mega Man, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, love that game. Oh man, I remember the wizard when Super Mario Bros. 3 came out. Uh, we've got Samus, we've got Contra, we've got Double Dragon, and we've got. Legend of Zelda. So you have a pretty, pretty good list of different games for that system. Now the Sega Master System, I don't remember this specific one. This is the Sega Master Master System 2. I've had the Sega Master System 1. That's about it. But you have Sonic Outrun, Sonic Chaos. I mean, you have a great, 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 great list of games that came out on this system. Now, for those that want to look, here you go. Just pause, and you can see a community of gamers. Um, Streets of Rage, awesome game. Mortal Kombat 2, remember the ABAC, ABB. And in terms of Mercs, I don't remember that game. I never played it. But um, at this one, this is the system that I remember. That was always an awesome game. Number one arcade. Uh, you have different controllers, yes. I remember that. You had different um, things they wanted you to buy, and it was like, screw it. They were already setting themselves up for massive failure because I wasn't buying all those things. But let's see. Number one here Psycho Box. I don't remember it. It looks like a freaking copy of Alice Kid in Miracle World, which I do remember where he had this big fist that he used to. Um, Operation Wolf, don't remember. California games, you had Skate or Die on Nintendo, so I've never played that. Um, Baku Baku Animal, heard about it, never played it. No, oh, this is Baku Baku. What is this? R Type. Sorry. That's R Type. Sorry. Yeah. Baku Baku, what's this one? Um, Wonder Boy 3. They called this Alex a Kid. This one, but I don't remember really which game the system I played this one. So, I'm a little confused on that. Uh, Prince of Persia, they still kept porting it. So, basically, the lesson is that if you ever have a classic that keeps selling, keep putting it on the newest system. Just the, just, just advice. Let's see. Sonic the Hedgehog, I think everybody remembers that game. And Fantasy Star, which was probably one of the first games that had a female protagonist in the United States. Besides Samus and other systems, but I'm saying in the United States, there's a difference. The 
PC engine. Uh, this one was called the Turbo Graphics 16. So, uh, yeah. Right up here. Turbo Graphics 16. I've played it. Let's see. And I didn't play a lot of games. Um, some of these smaller games, I mean, the bigger games, I didn't really play at all. But Bonk's Adventure was a great one. And our type, I think I played at least once. Fantasy Zone, Afterburner. The Fantasy Brothers, I never played. Afterburner, I played at the arcades. Um, Fantasy Zone, I've played on the Sega Master System, not on the Sega Genesis. Or Sega Master System, not the Turbo Graphics. And this one is Space Harrier. Of course, I played that on the Sega Genesis as well. So, what was going on? Fantasy Zone. It still had it, still had a, a lot of great games. Let's look at the 10 that they were pushing. R type, of course, you can't go wrong. Uh, Splatterhouse, eh, hit or miss. Not really, not really feeling it. Get yeah, Keisha or Photo Boy. I don't know what in the world that is. Um, Dracula, Rondo of Blood. Yay, didn't play that until much later. Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. And this one had just as much better good graphics as the Super Nintendo. So, you can see how, how great that system was. Um, PC, Box Adventure. Definitely, definitely played this game. This game was awesome. And I think that's actually the last boss. You know, the last boss is great. Unless I'm thinking about King K. Rool. That's not the story. Um, here's Wise 1 and 2. I have actually have those games on Steam now. I recommend those, especially when you have the, um, the protagonist. She she has she's great with an act. She's awesome. Um, today, Sinchi Spriggan never played it. Um, Gamola Speed don't know it. And Bomber ninety Bomberman ninety four played it. Um, not this specific one. They always import new games. Now this is called the Mega Drive or. Sega Genesis is what we would call it. Toe Jam and Earl, never played it. Um, Aladdin, never played it. And Flashback, loved it. Let's see. Chuck Rock, no one, never played it. I saw it on Nick Arcade. Earthworm Jim, forgot a lot of God's sake, I've never played that game myself. Um, Road Rage, that was a great game. Um, Madden was actually, I would actually play that. Um, this one I don't know much about. What is that? Desert Strike? Never played it. And FIFA International Soccer? Never played it myself. So, what were the other games? Race Rage? Play it. Play it. Just play it. Um, if you can, find the Streets of Rage remake. This one is definitely worth your while. There's remake especially. It does so much better than what Sega is doing. And Sega, for all intents and purposes, has decided not to support the Streets of Rage remake, which I think is a tragedy on their part. Sonic the Hedgehog, Shining Force, Echo the Dolphin, all of these games are great, including Shinobi. So, just to say. And computer and video games, I remember some of these episodes, I probably don't have them, because I used to collect books, but here's a space area that I played at least like once or twice. Castle of Illusion was great, but I played this on the Super Nintendo. Um, never played Quack Shot, but you can see it. Um, Lucas was doing a lot of things with it. Actually, this is Disney. Huh. Okay, Disney was doing a lot of great things with their licenses. And Fantasia, I didn't really play. World of Illusion, I didn't play. So, let me see. Um, I remember this game in the arcades, but I don't quite think they got the f vibe for it on the, um, Super Nintendo, on the Sega Genesis. But, say, Sonic 2, played it, loved it, Capcom, Strider, Ghouls and Ghosts, Forgotten Worlds, I don't remember that game, and Mercs, again, haven't played it. Um, Gunstar Heroes, oh my god, play this game. If you can emulate it in any way, shape, or form, get this game. Um, Alien Soldier, and play it. Now, Game Boy. Let's see what we got here. Um, you 
know all the information. Battery Life helped the Game Boy to win the war because the Sega, the Sega, mat, uh, Sega Game Gear drained six batteries. It was ridiculous how much you went through it. So I just, even to this day, whenever I have to play any kind of games, I just pretty much just keep it plugged in just in case. I, that's how much the Game Gear has traumatized me. So, if you need some places to go, I don't think it's showing up here, but I'll probably put the links in the underbar if someone asks, but there were plenty of games to play here, and what Nintendo did great about the Game Boy is the fact that when you were had this Game Boy, they transferred the titles onto the newest one and slowly didn't phase it out, you know, you kept a great library of games from one generation to another and then from that generation on forward as long as they were doing that as long as Sega was their main competition they would continue to have a great library once they started closing off that library that's when all the problems started that's in my view but again perfect 10 of games Legend of Zelda never played it um, I played Bill and Ted's game, no I didn't. R-Type, never played it, not on here. Super Mario Land, I beat that. Pokemon, I beat that. Um, I had Red, so never played Metroid. And of course, everyone had Tetris, because you would have to buy the game either by itself, or you'd have Tetris as one of the first games. And it only worked great when you had one game that came with it. Um, baseball, never played it. Castlevania, never played it. Kirby's Pinball Land, I can recommend it to you. Um, Atari Lynx, not really played, but let's see some of the games here. Um, again, for those that are looking, uh, those are some of the sites. Perfect 10, let's see. Chip Challenge, Rampart, I've heard of. Uh, oh, that's Clax. Here's Rampart, that's Clax. So, sorry about that. Um, Lemmings, again. Not really feeling the lemmings here. I don't think they showed as many lemmings. Not as good processor power. Stun Runner, Blue Lightning, um, Xenophobe, never really heard of. Alpine Games, and Todd Slime, and Darla Mercenary. Don't really know those games, so I'm going to keep going to the Game Gear. And with the Game Gear, what they do Gunstar Heroes on there. That was great. Um, they actually had Adam's Family, which I would recommend to people. It was a great game. I think it was more RPG based. And they also had Shining Force, which, again, that's a great game. I always loved the Shining Force series, so I always recommend it to people. Um, Gunstar Heroes. We got Baku Baku Animal. Wonder Boy again. Sonic the Hedgehog. Bubble Bobble. Streets of Rage 2, which I can't believe they actually got on there. Sh Shinobi, you had five different ninjas that you could play as, which was always awesome. So you could always have different ways and different tactics to going about playing the game. Um, Power Strike, I haven't played. Prince of Persia, of course. And Shining Force is always a good game, no matter what system you got. So let's go on to the big one that we know of. Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Best game and if you can watch the the show, this is Secret of Mana. It was always it was an awesome game about trying to save the world as a young boy. Um, I think the cast was really well developed, but eh, just a little generic. And I don't even know Fire Emblem Thracia. I've never played, so I can't comment on it. Um, Super Mario World, F Zero, Star Fox. You know these games. Yoshi's Island just still looks like a masterpiece to this day. And let's go with the perfect 10. Um, Super Mario Kart, you just could not go wrong with that game. And it's still, and it, it's odd that it's out now. But I'd say go and play the old one, and then compare what happened in the basics to this newest one. Um, Super Metroid, I keep hearing people tell me to play this game, but I haven't yet. Contra, or nope. Not Contra. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Too linear. And 
I probably prefer Ocarina of Time to this one. It's graphically detailed, but my problem is you knew where to go and what to do, and I didn't like that. I liked exploring on my own after a while. Um, this is Contra. Then Axley, I don't really know of, so uh, I'll have to move on. Super Mario Brothers All-Stars. Four great games in one. It was still overpriced as all hell, but that's another story. Chrono Trigger. Play it. Play it. 20 different endings. Uh, and this is Street Fighter Alpha 2. I can't believe they got all that onto one disc. But I may have to check that out later on. Um, Pilot Wings is always a great game. And Umihara Kawase, I don't know anything about. So I cannot tell you. Now, Philip CDI. <laughs> Okay, now, okay, I don't know if I can get close, but, um, that says nudality, I'm just gonna point it out, but, um, let's just do like this and get a little closer. Let's see, that game is The Apprentice, and that's pretty much where it's from, people found out that there was new code, so, I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, other, other parts of the series... Both Ram Raid and the Atlantis and Atlantis and Last Resort set precedents. Both FPS allowed online scoring and Atlantis loaded entire levels into memory, allowing the disc to be replaced with a music CD. So, this was the precedent for different games on the PS PlayStation later on, but I'll get into that later. Um, some of the games, this was an unfinished one. Let's see, you also had, what is this, Voyeur, okay, I'm gonna leave that alone, wow, this thing is really, 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 really good, we have a lot of games, okay, The Apprentice was good, Pack Panic, Ugh. okay, Pack Panic was right here, Plunder Ball, that's what that is, Hotel Mario, I don't really, um, I don't really know much about, so I can't comment on it, Brain Dead 3, which is, they made Space Ace. Um, Burn Cycle, I don't really know about. Ram Raid, I'm just trying to find anything that would look decent. And of course, you got Link, Faces of Evil, Zelda, The Wind of Gamelon. No, no comment. The Mega CD, which was this little hunk of junk right there. The Sega CD has some decent games, but. The main decent games of that system, Lunar, Time Gal, and Sonic CD, that's pretty much it, in my opinion. Okay, okay, Final Fight, that's always been a good one. And there's a few ones in here, you probably can't see them, but I'm being harsh on this today because I remember it for Night Trap. Um, the 93 hearings were going on, that's mainly where I know of the CD, Sega CD, but... Let's see. Sonic CD, Final Fight CD, um, Shining Force. I can't believe it was on Sonic CD. I didn't even know about that. Okay. I'll have to take back some of what I said. It, it was a decent system. I just didn't have... I just didn't play all the games like Lunar, Popful Mail. Those are good. Um, there's also Snatcher. That's what this is. And KO Flying Squadron. I don't know much about myself. But um, the protagonist is... In a sexy bunny suit. Now, the 3DO. Let's see. What's going on here? How the 3DO stacked up. Do, do, do. Maybe I can transport that and put it onto the internet one day. Maybe. Let's see. Didn't really stack up all that well. Amistrad GX 4000 was a failure. The Panasonic 3DO was a failure. But it did do some things differently that we now use, like the USB plug-in. Interesting. But let's see. Games. Dr. Hauser, Nova Storm, Powers Kingdom. The need for speed was on this damn thing. And the Horde and FIFA International. And for the most part, the 3DO lost so many developers. Maybe I can talk about that later on. Uh, let's see. Demolition Man. Primal Rage. That is a game that I have not heard a lot about. But that was a great game. 
Um, it was a fighting game similar to uh, Mortal Kombat, just with a whole bunch of big dinosaurs. Star Control looks like a decent game. Road Rash. Uh, Road, did I say Road Rage earlier? Maybe I meant Road Rash. But Bikes and Violence, that's, that was the game to get right there. Um, I'd heard of Way of the Warrior, but never really played it. Um, again, Need for Speed was getting off its feet, and Wing Commander was going, going into the room. Atari Jaguar. I, I want to skip this section. I really do. So, I'm going to skip this section. Except, maybe the games. Okay. Um, because I'm getting to 40 minutes. Let's see. Good game. No, it wasn't. But this one was Rayman. This one is B.I.W.N. Missile Command. And other than that, I don't really see anything else. Maybe Iron Soldier looks good, but I haven't played it to say, and I'm not going to. Sega Saturn. Excuse me. Played some of it. Enjoyed it. But it was $600. Now that was like about $1,000. And it was just ridiculous at that price point. So the games were awesome. It just didn't sell. Not in the United States. And this is where the beginning of the end for Sega as a console developer. Ah, man. So much potential. Because the games looked exactly like the arcade versions. Like Virtua Fighter. And I forget what this one was. But it, um, 3D Rally or something like that. I don't, I'm not too sure. Um, let's see. Um, what other games did we have? Knights is right here. Um, doo -doo. Dead or Alive would get large on it. Um, you also had Capcom putting X-Men versus Street Fighter, I believe. Or just X-Men. That was a great one. And I haven't heard of Princess Crown. I'm probably going to look into that. But you know Symphony of, Symphony of the Night. And this is Psycho Killer Maru. I don't know anything about it, but it's made by Time Warner Interactive. So, this one, Sega Rally Championship. Okay, Knights in the Dreams was a great game. Um, Guardian Heroes was a great game, and it should have been ported to more things. Shining Force, still always a great game. Never played it. Um, not on Sega, Sega Saturn. Panzer Dragoon Slay, we need more games like this one. And Virtual Cop, it would start with Time Crisis. It would start with like Time Crisis as the predecessor. So I recommend Virtual Cop because it's a pretty good game. Radiant Silver Gun, if you like the sh shoot 'em ups, this is a great game to get. And Street Fighter Zero Three, that's the final one where they start with like Alpha and everything. Now the PCFX was not necessarily something that we knew here in the United States. There were a lot of hentai titles. That's pretty much what it says. So, I'm not going to really get into it too much. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Um, just keep going. Nintendo 64. Okay, now some of this is Snow Ki Snowboard Kids was a great game. Uh, Super Mario 64 people know about. I didn't even know this game. I don't even know what that game is. But Star Fox 64, I would beat that game so many different ways. And all, I wanted to get 100% on it. And I love doing that. Um, I never played Wave Race. Super Paper Mario, I didn't really play. Um, and of course, Final Fantasy um, Demo. That came out. You also had Ocarina of Time. Diddy Kong Racing was great, but you also had Banzo Banjo Kazooie. That was good. And I don't think this is perfect dark, but it, they just tried out different things. And Goldeneye, man, oh man. So let's look at these. Goldeneye, everybody remembers that game, but. I think the better one is probably Perfect Dark, personally. Um, down here we have Legend of Zelda, Super Mario, we have F-Zero, which I never played. Lilac Wars, I've never played. Wait a minute. 
my lap wars. Oh. Oh, my lap wars is Star Fox. Okay, Banjo Kazooie. Never played that one. Um, okay, I played a little bit, demoed it, but never really got into it. That was just me. I should have beaten that game a long time ago. Of course, Super Smash Bros. And Sin and Punishment. Never heard of that game. What's that game about? Treasure may have only released three games for the Nintendo N64, but we consider every single one of them to be a work of art that deserves to be played again and again. For the perfect 10, we've gone with a superb Sin and Punishment, though, because it pushed the machine like no other game. A simple on-the-rail shooter at heart, Sin and Punishment is nevertheless a Gideon roller coaster of a ride that instantly grabs you by the balls and doesn't let them out of its vice-like grip until the whole Disney experience is over. Yikes. Okay. Virtual Boy. Gunpei Yokoi's innovation that would go on to be the 3DS, in my view. Now, I mean, some people can sit here and gripe, bitch, and moan, whatever they want. But the fact is, Virtual Boy was awesome. I mean, was the predecessor to what was going on later on. So, let's see. Any good games here? I never played it, so I'm going to skip it and go to, straight to the Game Boy Color. Which is still the Game Boy. But, I mean, now you have color. whoop de doo I mean, they still had the same games. They still had that massive library. And people benefited from that. Benefited from that huge library of games that they were already playing. But now they could see a lot more in color. So, really, you don't have to go over that again. Now, the other one is the Dreamcast that I believe a lot of people really, really need to check out. Jet Set Radio. I'm going to link to um, Black Prion because he's playing, he played the game. I love that game. I love that game a lot. I wish that there were more sequels to it. I wish they had, had more time to help with that. Because, I mean, to create that. Because they had a very, very good story that was going on. That, unfortunately, I don't believe got told. So, the Dreamcast had plenty of fighting games. And, of course, people still love Shinmue 2. So, Shinmue and Shinmue, they need to have more games come out for it. So, here is some of the links. Planet Dreamcast, DC News. Dreamcast scene and Dreamcast Junkyard, which I'm going to keep going. Um, I don't know what this game is, but Crazy Taxi and everything else, this was a great game. So, let's go ahead and keep going. Dreamcast Perfect 10, Resident Evil Cold Veronica, Soul Calibur. I mean, you have great games all over the place. Resident Evil Cold Veronica, Soul Calibur. Metropolis Street Racer, I never got it into. And Shimmer 1 and 2. I mean, we still need those games. Fantasy Star Online, I really want to play. And I want to play the Skies of Arcadia as well. And Rez, I keep hearing about, but I don't play it myself. Now, this is the Neo Geo Pocket. Again, batteries sucked. I mean, that thing was a hoover for bat batteries. But, I mean, you got to play... What is this thing called? Metal Slug, which was always awesome, and King of Fighters, among other titles. So here, they had Puzzle Bobble Mini, they had the um, Card Fighters Clash, which was a great um, type of game. Let's see. And what is this? Seven? Looks like Facili. I don't know what that is, but they made Shadow Hearts and Kodelka. But pretty much, that's pretty much it. So, as you can see, this is the entire history of video game hardware. I mean, they don't have the most recent ones, but I recommend this book to anybody that really wants to understand video games, and they want to sit here and see it for themselves. So, I've already taken enough of your time. Thank you for looking into this book with me, and I'll go ahead and I'll be reading this all by myself, but I'll see you all next time.